So on Friday, I made a video about motor efficiencies and it's, it's doing well. It seems like it's connecting good, but the, the question I keep getting is what about power factor? So in this video, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to add power factor into the motor efficiency question to make it just a little bit more realistic. But first off, I gotta grab myself a cup of coffee. Okay, now here's the deal. You notice I'm wearing a different hoodie and I, I, everything looks a little bit different. It's because I'm recording the next day. I ran out of time, I had to go get the kids, pick them up from school. So it doesn't matter, I'm still doing the same stuff. We're here to look at motor efficiency and we're throwing power factor in with what I'm talking about. You can see what I mentioned in the last video. You can just click on that link up top there. That'll give you all the information you need as to where we're going. I'm gonna use the same value. So I'm gonna walk through the whole steps again here and talk you through this whole process. So what we're gonna do is let's take a look at my whiteboard here. I'm starting out with a horsepower of 10. I've got an efficiency, that little funky N, that's my efficiency of the motor, and I've got 240 volts available. That's what's running the motor. So my first step here, let's just work this out. My first step, step one is 10 times 746. There's 746 watts in a horsepower, so we have to multiply the horsepower and convert it into watts. That ends up being 7,460 watts. That is our output watts. And again, I talk a little bit more about that in the last video, so make sure you go ahead and watch that. But that does not concern us as electricians. What we're concerned with is the input watts. So we need to use this formula. Let's see the formula I'm talking about. This N, that's efficiency, is output. One second here, that was a little weird. Let me just get rid of that. Let's go with output, output over input. All right, we have our output. We have our efficiency. So we know that our efficiency is 75% or 0.75 is equal to the output, which is 7460, which we've already calculated out. And our input is what we're trying to calculate. So X is equal to 7460 divided by 75%. X then is equal to, let me pull up my calculator, 7460 divided by 0.75 equals 9,946.7 watts. That is our input power. That's the power we are concerned with as our electricians. But we're throwing in a little wrench into this whole situation here. Normally we could use that to calculate our current, but we know that a motor is an inductor and an inductor creates power factor. So we end up with VARs and we end up with watts and we end up with VA. I'm not gonna get too into the theory behind that. There's videos that I've got back in Electric Academy. Take a look at what power factor is through that. I'm gonna assume you have a basic general knowledge. Let's say that this particular motor here has a power factor of, I'm gonna say, uh, let's say 70%. It's got a power factor of 70%. What we want to do is we need to create a triangle. All right, this is the method that I teach my classes and it works every time. So let's do that. We're gonna create a triangle. So we've got this here, this triangle. The bottom is always going to be your watts. So in this case, that was 9,946.7 watts. Your resistive element will always go in the bottom of your triangle. Get used to using that. Now what we are concerned with though, is we're not necessarily concerned with that, the bottom, we're not even concerned with this side, the VARs. We are concerned with this apparent power, our VA. So what we need to do with that is we need to figure out what our VA is. We can do that with power factor. That 70% power factor goes into our triangle. And I generally put it right about here, 0 0.7. It's right there, that's my 70%. I just do that to remind myself of how I'm gonna use this. Now let me show you a little trick that I teach my class. You can always figure out your VA if you have your watts and your power factor by going watts divided by power factor equals VA. Works every single time. So let me just get rid of a bunch of stuff here. We don't need all that. We don't need this here. 
Let's go with watts, which is our watts down here, 9946.7 divided by 0.7 will give us our VA, our apparent power, and that's what we're basing our current off of. 9946.7 divided by 0.7 equals 14,209.6 VA. So we can take that and we can put that here, 14,209.6 VA. That is our apparent power. That's the number that we use to figure out what our current is. We don't base our current off the watts. Because we have an inductor in play here, we actually have resistive elements that are in play with inductive elements. And if you look at this triangle, I have my resistor at the bottom, that's the resistive element. But then because it's an inductor, we have all these VARs, this useless wattless power, which creates this triangle. And then we base our current off of the VA, not off of the watts. Again, I'm not gonna go too much into the theory of this. I just want you to see where this is all coming from. Go watch the other videos. Now, now that I have my watts, let me just get something out of the way again. I can figure out my current by taking my VA, right? Cause I can get current by going VA divided by voltage equals current. So in this case, I can go 14,209.6 divided by 240 volts will get me my current in this case. So I divide that by 240 and I get a current of 59.2 amps. So it's very similar to the last video that we did where we took the, figured out what the watts were but did not take into account power factor. We have to take power factor into account because it's an inductive machine. You have that inductance there. So we need to be more realistic about it. So thanks to all you people who shouted out and say, hey, what about power factor? There you go. That's what we do with the power factor. We figure out what our watts are, our input watts. We build a triangle to figure out what our VA is. We use our VA to figure out our current, boom. Before I go, I just wanna mention that if you're struggling at all with anything to do with electrical mathematics, especially foundational stuff, I've been paired up and partnered up with BCIT, the British Columbia Institute of Technology to create a math for trades course. So what I will do, it's launching October 12th, I believe, and I'm going to put a link to it down in the, in the um, comments below in the description. So if you're looking for help with that sort of thing, make sure you click on that. It is through the British Columbia Institute of Technology. No, you don't have to be a BC resident to take it. It's online completely. So I'm really proud of the work that Aaron Lee and myself have done to build this. Definitely hit me up with any questions in the comments if you have about that or any questions to do with any of this. Have a great day. We'll see you all next week. Thank you.